Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in once again to Queen Amadai TV presents The Root of All Evil. This is a true crime channel where emphasis focuses on the perpetrators of the crimes committing these acts solely for monetary gain. Now, this nefarious story just goes to show how people absolutely, some people that is, will do anything for money. So let's get into it. Everyone, please come in, giving the video a like and a share. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done so already, be sure to click that notification bell and click the word all so that you're notified each time the Queen Goddess goes live. Okay, you can also follow me on Instagram at Queen Amadai Shakur. And you can also follow the Queen Amadai Shakur fan page. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at dgoddess27. Okay, so let's get into this. So this is the story about a 16-year-old girl named Candace Walton. Uh, she lived with her mother, who was 46 years old, and her brother, who was 21. Now, there was a house, a house fire that killed both Candace's mother and brother. And by the time the fire was discovered, the firefighters rushed to the scene. The police and all of them rushed to the scene. The house was fully engulfed in flames. And when the firefighters went inside, and they found two bodies after extinguishing the fire. They actually thought that Candace was one of the victims. They thought the two bodies they found were her and her brother. But no, it was actually the mom and brother. And then upon further investigation, come to find out that Candace had actually set the fire herself, stolen her mother's tax refund check, which was for the amount of $2,300. And then she fled and she was on her way headed out of town to meet up with her 17 year old boyfriend. Now, the whole story is so ghastly and it's really crazy that someone would go through all of this for $2,300. So anyway, the police ended up catching her. She was headed to Oregon uh, to see her boyfriend or whatever. And then Sheriff Brad Freeman said that she was found. She was found in her mother's 2007 Chevy. She had apparently driven her mother's car toward Oregon where her boyfriend's 17-year-old Calio Pangelion had, had moved. Now, she got only as far as Western Kentucky before McCracken County deputies took her into custody where she was then put in jail. And that's where they found the $2,300 in cash on her, which Adam said it was a key piece of evidence in the story because it was likely stolen because of her mother's tax refund check. They said they also confiscated her phone and they waited to see what communication she had during the night. Now, Candace was trying so desperately to fight extradition back to Georgia. Anyway, Eric Walton, Candace's surviving sibling, said that he believed at the time that the boyfriend should have been charged as well. He says, as far as I'm concerned, he put her up to the whole thing. She would never have wanted to do this to her mother and brother. I guess she loved her boyfriend more than she loved them. A former neighbor who used to babysit for the family, uh, Vicky Pippin Jimenez, she agreed. She felt like Candace's boyfriend also likely put her up to it. Now she says Candace was a good kid, but when she started dating this boy, it got worse. She wanted to be with him more than anything. Jimenez said that Van Diver was a hard worker who cleaned homes to provide for her kids. Each child had a different father, but Van Diver wanted them all to have the Walton name after she married Eric's father. And this is what the neighbor told them. Now, as for Gerald Walton, friends, friends remember him as a kind young man with special needs who loved Mary Parsons, uh, Mary Parsons football and loved to fish. His former special ed teacher, Ellen Criswall, wrote about him on Facebook after his death. She said, he was such a precious soul, too precious for this cruel world. He never said a bad word about anyone, but he would say something bad about any team that was playing against MP, which is Mary Persons, uh, because he loved Mary Persons football like no other. I was trying to help his mom get the Medicaid waiver so that he could come, come and be a part of my program, she said. I last saw him on Christmas Eve when I went over to their house and slipped him a $20 bill, and he grinned so big and whispered to me that he would buy himself something nice. 
The last conversation we had was a few days ago when I asked him if he wanted to go to the Special Olympics with me, and he said yes, he wanted to go. He genuinely loved his friends so very much, and he will be missed by so many. What a privilege it was for him to be a part of my life. Now, Freeman said they were looking at the time at Pangelion, whom they considered as a witness. Now, Pangelion moved to Mon Monroe County from, from Oregon the summer before and then returned to Oregon later on that year. School officials said that he spent about four months at Mary Persons as a junior. Candace Walton was then a freshman. They started dating in October. Eric Walton said his mother never cared for Pangelion and was working to put a restraining order on him. Now, Eric also said that Pangelion's Instagram account under the, he had an Instagram account under the name That Boy Down. And his bio said, Satan's left hand man. Well, that clearly proves to me that he was nefarious. Now, Eric Walton said that he last talked to his mother on Wednesday. She had just received her tax refund check and was looking to buy a truck. He said that she had also bought Candace a new iPhone. He said she was always put first. That was his sister, he said. Now, Freeman said they gave a lot of the evidence against Can Candace and uh, that no drugs or alcohol were involved. So they said they had a lot of evidence. Proctor apologized that Tuesday for initially misidentifying one of the bodies as belonging to the suspect. Funeral service were held on that Saturday. The murders came seven months after another teenager, 15-year-old Dane Krieger, or Dante Krieger, was accused of raping and killing his aunt in Monroe County. Now, Adams said while Monroe County enjoys relatively low crime, the two incidents were very concerning. He said for two two children to commit the most worst and shocking crimes, it makes you realize how important our schools are and how important it is to do the best that you can do at home. There's definitely some evil in this world. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. That is evil, was heinous, and everything else that you can possibly think of that pertains to being nefarious. But here's the thing. So after all of that, Candace Walton decided to plead guilty to killing her mother and brother in, in the 2020 um, arson. So she pleaded guilty to all counts in the case. The charges included malice murder and felony murder for each victim, theft by taking, as well as first degree arson. And she pleaded to all of this on last Wednesday. Now, Walton was sentenced to life without the or with the possibility of parole for killing Gerald Walton, her 21 year old brother who had special needs and her mother, Tasha Van Diver. So I don't know how they were giving, giving her the possibility of parole when she murdered two people and in such a gruesome manner. Now, upon the coroner's report, he said that they actually died from smoke inhalation, which, in my opinion, is better from being burnt to death. So Calio Pangelion. Walton's boyfriend and the other suspect in the case was scheduled for trial later that later this or he's scheduled for trial later this year. And, you know, at first they were not planning on charging him, but the brother absolutely thought that he should be. And the neighbor did as well. And like I said, people actually thought that he was the one that put Candace up to it. So the boyfriend of a Monroe County teen accused of killing her special needs brother, as well as her mother, was also arrested and charged with their murder. According to a news release from the Monroe County Sheriff's Office, investigators found evidence and they charged 17-year-old Calio Pangelion with two counts of murder. Investigators with the Douglas County Sheriff's Office in Rosenberg, Oregon, arrested him around 4.30 p.m. that Thursday. Pangelion was at the time facing extradition and uh, for his hearing that was going to take place in Georgia. Now, with that all being said, this is just real crazy because you have to ask yourself, how does someone talk another person into committing such a depraved, heinous crime against their own family members? And for a mere $2,300, I mean, that's not certainly not a lot of money. And I know they say the brother has special needs and that he was in a, a, a special ed class at school. 
But I have to ask her, what kind of classes did her boyfriend take? If he, it is true what they say, that he's the one who put her up to this. I'm just wondering. Because you take two people's lives for $2,300? That's just absolutely egregious. Anyway, so like I said, Candace was charged as an adult. She's serving life in prison with the possibility of parole. I don't know how much of that time she'll have to serve, but the whole thing is just really reprehensible that somebody would have this much um, this much of a, a thirst for money and to be with her boyfriend, whom her mother clearly couldn't stand, that she would go out and do something like this. I find it absolutely appalling. Well, anyway, that's what people do for money. Let us not forget that it is the love of money, not money itself, but the love of money that is, in fact, absolutely the root of all evil. So there's a video footage of a news report about this whole thing, and I'm going to show that. Everyone, please get those likes up. Please like and share. Subscribe to the channel. If you haven't done so already, be sure to click that notification bell and click the word all so that you're notified each time the Queen Goddess goes live. Don't forget that you can follow me on Instagram at Queen Amadai Shakur. You can also find me on Twitter at dgoddess 27 and don't forget, you can also follow my uh, Queen Amadai Shakur fan page. So anyway, I'm going to show some pictures of the family. I know you already saw that um, video that I posted, but I want to show some, some video footage of the family. And it's very hard to believe that anyone would do this to someone that they supposedly loved, let alone two people. I'm going to mute my mic for a second and share my screen. Everyone, please get those likes up. Please like and share. Thank you in advance. This waltz and she has been charged with two counts of murder. A Monroe County 16-year-old is charged with murdering her brother and another person who could be her mom. Candace Walton is also accused of setting yesterday's fire that gutted her family home. Wanye Reese joins us live from Monroe County. Wanye, what's the latest on this investigation? Lori, we just found out this evening that Candace Walton, she has been charged with two counts of murder arson and theft by taking right now we know that she is in a kentucky jail and she will be coming back to central georgia very soon investigators say 16 year old candace louise walton set the fire that struck her own home thursday and may have killed two people the firefighters arrived the, the residence was probably 60 to 75 percent engulfed in flames they put out the fire but soon found two bodies which were hard to identify due to severe burns and they uh called uh the Monroe county sheriff's office as well as arson investigators one of the victims is 21 year old gerald walton a former teacher says gerald was a special needs student and he just generally loved everyone he never would say a negative negative word about anybody just always just a sweet sweet soul and it's just a tragedy that you know we lost him the second victim hasn't been identified but freeman believes it's possibly candace's mom tasha vandiver correct there's a high likelihood that's that's who it is freeman won't comment on what they think happened or why but he says candace stole her mom's car and drove to kentucky where U.S. Marshals ended her trip. And when they took her into custody, uh, you know, there was evidence that came to light that the vehicle was stolen and she was taken into custody for possession of that stolen vehicle as well as possession of some other stolen things she had inside the car. Candace is also charged with arson and theft by taking. Freeman won't comment on whether anyone else was involved. This is still a fluid investigation and there, there could be other charges forthcoming. We just don't know at this time. Freeman says they are securing search warrants for Candace's cell phone. Meanwhile, Freeman is asking the community to remain strong. Ask that the public pray for the family. Freeman added that Candace will be back in central Georgia by the end of next week. It is important to note that she is being charged as an adult, but she will be held in a youth regional detention center due to her age. Live in Monroe County, Wanya Reese, 13 WMAZ News.
Thank you, Wanye. Anyone with information on the case can call the Monroe County Sheriff's Office at 478-994-7010. That number again is 478 478- Now, of course, I'm sure that you realize that that broadcast was recorded prior to them finding her, okay? And luckily, they found her quick because there's no telling what she was up to. Clinton Nefarious and the boyfriend, just when he thought he was going to let her take the fall by herself, they realized that he was in on it too. So they both are going just where they need to be, in prison. And in fact, they should be absolutely under the prison, setting the house on fire to kill your mother and your brother for $2,300 measly dollars. That's absolutely insane. At the end of the day, you shouldn't kill anyone for any amount of money. But the fact that they did it for such a cheap price, I mean, did they actually think that was a lot of money? Apparently so. So that's just all so crazy and clearly nefarious. And you know, the truth of the matter is some people will absolutely unequivocally do anything for the love of money. And it is the love of money that is, in fact, the root of all evil. I know many people mistakenly say that money is the root of all evil. It absolutely is not. Money is an inanimate object. It is the love of money that people harbor that drives them to do things that are completely evil. So anyway, with that all being said, please like and share. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Be sure to click that notification bell and click the word all so that you're notified each time the Queen Goddess goes live. Please like and share. And until next time, beloveds, I will talk to you all again soon. Peace.